So if you are familiar with the Trocken watches, you know that they make very rugged looking watches and they are also inspired by South Africa. The owner is from South Africa, actually lives in New Zealand. However, his watches are heavily inspired by his home country. And you can see a lot of that inspiration in the packaging. Uh, this specific watch is actually inspired by the Kruger National Park. Kruger National Park is a wildlife preserve and it is actually directly inspired by the rangers who run that park. And they really can run into almost anything because it is a wildlife preserve. Uh, so there is a lot going on there, I am sure. Uh, and they need rugged watches to be their companion in the field. Uh, and this is a chronograph. It's a mecha quartz chronograph. Very rugged looking, and it has got some pretty good specs. It comes in pretty awesome packaging. This is a canvas Velcro patch, uh, pouch. Excuse me. There is a patch on here. Uh, that, I believe, is a white rhino. Correct me if I am wrong in the comments below, please. Uh, and then you can see a little like Savannah in the background. It says Kruger on it. That is Velcroed on here. There's a lot of Velcro here. It's going to sound very loud when I open it up. Uh, it's a very thick pouch that you could use for pretty much anything, carrying a cell phone, I don't know, knives, anything really, watches. It has two loops here to go on your belt and you get a loop here to hook it onto your belt if you wanted to. Inside, this is all laser etched into a piece of wood. That is sort of a topographic map, I assume, would be the Kruger National Park. Um, and then of course you get a watch, you get a strap. The strap is a seatbelt NATO strap. Uh, the buckle is not signed and it's in stainless steel, so I'm not a huge fan of uh, NATO straps. I believe it's a single pass-through, but either way, uh, not a huge fan, as you guys know. But a uh, really nice touch that this is laser etched with, uh, with that map on there. Pretty cool. Um, this is the black dial version, and then I also have the white dial version. Now, the white dial version is a fully loomed version. Uh, the black dial is not obviously fully loomed. Uh, however, basically the specs are exactly the same. You have a ceramic bezel, which is loomed. You have a little triangle in that bezel. Uh, then you get the dial. The dial has sort of a step to it. So the two registers at nine o'clock and three o'clock are a little step down from the rest of the dial. Uh, you have another register at the three, at the six o'clock, excuse me. That's just like a little crosshair. They haven't really done anything to make it stand out. I think they did that on purpose, sort of to make it look like a bi-compax uh, chronograph, even though you get that running seconds. Uh, it's at the six o'clock. It's a little hard to see, which I think I like. I think it works. Uh, and then you get a date below that. The date is at six o'clock. Uh, color matched on the black dial, not color matched on the white dial. Makes sense. Well, it technically is color matched because it's white, so it's white to the dial, uh, which works really well. Black and white on the white dial, so uh, a negative sort of effect on there when you actually loom it up. So really legible dials on here. Black and white again on the black, but again in the opposite direction. Uh, and I would imagine all of the indices are loomed on here. They are all printed. Uh, really just a robust feeling watch in your hands. All titanium. So these are all titanium. So you get a titanium bezel, titanium case, and titanium bracelet. I don't know if the buckle is actually in titanium, but uh, I will find that out and I will put that down in the comments below. But it is a typical micro brand buckle, as you can see. You get six positions of micro adjust. It is a manual micro adjust. Uh, and you get a pretty nice bracelet on here. This is the first, I think, Mecha Quartz chronograph. So it gets a Seiko Mecha Quartz chronograph. It's a VK63 that has uh, screwed in uh, actual bracelet. So the actual uh, links here are actually screwed in. Uh, one of the first that I've seen, I'm sure they do exist, uh, but it's the first ones that I have seen. Everything is bead blasted on these watches. So the bracelet is bead blasted, the buckle bead blasted. There's no polishing whatsoever anywhere on the watch. Uh, even the case back is bead blasted. The bezel, the case, everything, uh, the pushers, the crown, uh, everything is bead blasted. There's no polishing, no brushing on this watch whatsoever sort of goes in line with its rugged looks. It's a tool watch, it's meant to be used as a tool watch, so that kind of makes sense to me. Um, and you get sword hands on here, I didn't mention that, sword hands. These are loomed, these are probably not loomed because they sit against a loomed background, so again, that negative effect, so you will be able to see the hands when the dial is fully loomed uh, at night. Uh, really, just a very big, robust watch. 
Uh, the crown is uh, actually loomed and it has the logo. It is a dragon logo. That is the Draken. Draken, I believe, means dragon. That's why they use that. And again, you get that logo there uh, at the uh, 12 o'clock, right below the 12 o'clock index. Uh, there is a surround around the date. I'm not sure if that is loomed. We will do a loom shot at the end. That's really it. That's that's all that's going on on the dial. It is a busy dial to begin with, so uh, I'm glad they were a little restrained. It didn't add more text anywhere I like that. Sword hands, as I mentioned, these are loomed. Uh, and like I said, I don't believe these are. Uh, then there is the bezel. So uh, there are two things that I have found that I don't think are that great about this watch. One is the name on the side. Uh, if you watch any of my videos, I actually don't like that very much. Uh, it's something that a few brands do, even major brands do it. Like, uh, you know, you get that on the 50 Fathoms. Uh, I, I just don't love it. I really just don't love that. Uh, I wish they wouldn't do that or give you the option not to have it. In my opinion, it would be better. And then the bezel action. Now the bezel action on here isn't great. It is a titanium watch. It is a titanium bezel. Uh, but listen. It feels good. It actually sits pretty tight. It doesn't wiggle. It just doesn't sound great. It sounds like there's more than 120 clicks. If that makes sense. And for some reason, the one with the black dial feels lighter. You could hear it. It's just sort of crunchy and not clicky. Um, that has a lot to do with it being a titanium watch. Uh, so you either, you know, have to look past that and not care or you know, it's just something that you can't get past. Uh, very quickly, I'm gonna do some measurements on here. Measurements on these are actually pretty big, but they don't wear very big. So 43.6, basically a 44 millimeter watch. I think they list it as a 44 millimeter watch, but technically it doesn't wear like one. I, I would say it wears like a 42 millimeter, 49.7. That's at the bracelet. At the actual lugs, it's 48.8, so a little bit smaller, so 49, yeah, uh, and it is uh, female end links, but the male, uh, the female end link, excuse me, there's the uh, end link to that actually sticks out a little bit further, so uh, it does wear a little bit bigger. And then the crown, 6.8 millimeters. Thickness on here, it is pretty thick for a Mecca Quartz watch, but you do get 300 meters of water resistance with this watch, which I kind of find interesting because you don't get screwed in crowns, which is really good. They Manage to do this. Obviously, you can't operate the chronograph uh, when you are underwater. Um, you get 300 meters of water resistance when you're underwater. Don't use your chronograph and you get 300 meters of water resistance. That's great. Um, pretty cool. Very, very good looking watches um, and really robustly made. They really are. They do feel very substantial. Now, the price on this is $338. I think that's a really good price uh, for what you're getting. You're getting a really good package. Uh, I think they are donating some money to the uh, Kruger National Park. Uh, I have to say, this is probably one of the nicest, and I said this recently about another watch that I had on the channel that was a Mecca Quartz. I thought it was the nicest Mecca Quartz watch that I had on the channel. Uh, I think this is the nicest now. This definitely does take the cake. 300 meters of water resistance. The bracelet's really nice. Um, you know, the case is really nice. The dial, the bezel, everything is really nice. Now, uh, I don't like the bezel action, but that's kind of a personal thing because I don't like titanium bezel action and it's just a little crunchy for, for what I like. But uh, the only thing I genuinely don't like is that uh, Draken on the side. That's really it. Um, 338 is really good. When these go up, I think that kind of reaches the limits. So I think this is gonna go up to like 400 and change. That reaches the limits for me of what I would spend on a quartz watch. Uh, you're not getting a, uh, a mechanical movement. You're getting a mecha quartz movement, which is cool. You know, you get that sweep second to the hand, uh, to the chronograph hand. You don't get a sweep second on the second hand uh, because the actual quartz movement is what powers the time. The mechanical part is what powers the chronograph. So there you go. Anyway. Let's do a quick wrist check and then uh, I'll show you guys these on my wrist and then we will wrap up the video, do a loom shot and then wrap up the video. Today I have my P01. It is a Tudor. 
Uh, it is a very big watch. This is 43 or 42 millimeters. It wears bigger than both of these watches. Uh, and I believe the dimensions uh, are, are smaller, uh, you know, uh, case size, but the actual lug to lug size is like 50 something, like in the high 50s. It's, pre it's pretty big. Uh, I put it on a bracelet. Um, so it does wear very large, uh, but I think I pull it off. I really like it. I think it's a good looking watch. I think it's kind of weird. Uh, I'll throw the uh, white dial on my wrist. So as you can see that there is a little kink in this bracelet. I noticed this once before. I thought it was just a fluke. But you can see this, this bracelet is kinked up and I can't get it to actually unkink. Uh, and it happened before, but there I had a, you heard that snap. It snapped back into place. Um, that's because of the shape of the, uh, the actual bracelet, I think, because they actually uh, sort of chamfer the edge here so they have a, an edge here and there is no edge on the underside so i think it gets caught a little bit um that i hope they fix uh during production so that is something definitely to keep in mind um i have a seven and a half inch wrist this was not sized for my wrist so i'm just squeezing it onto my wrist but you can see it does fit me um i think i would probably put another link in here um but there you go seven and a half inch wrist this is a 44 millimeter watch. I think it was like 43.6 millimeters on the thicker side at 14 millimeters. So it is a thick, it is a big watch. It wears like a 42 or 43 millimeter. I don't think it wears like a 44, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, it's a good looking watch though. I really do like the looks of the watch. Uh, just a couple of quirks, like I mentioned. Uh, and then the bracelet thing, which we just saw, which was kind of weird. But other than that, uh, very good looking watch. So that's the white on my seven and a half interest here is the black this one is not sized near for my wrist so it will hang loose but there it is really good looking very very good looking sort of like a pilot slash dive chronograph ready for anything obviously uh the kruger national reserve you have to be ready for anything going in the water jumping in a plane a helicopter chasing down some wild animals poachers, whatever it might be. There you go. Uh, you have a watch to carry it with, uh, carry it around with you. So, uh, pretty cool. So very quickly loom shot, and then we'll wrap up the video. I mean, I don't really have to say much here. The loom is good. The loom is really good. The uh, fully loom dial, that negative effect for the indices and the hands, you get a loomed bezel. Loom bezel is very bright. Everything is very bright on this watch. Uh, crown loomed as well very brightly they did a really good job $338 you know that's quirky you can have a little bit of an issue with that side uh, name on there I have that issue some do I know a lot of people agree with me when I you know sort of complain about that some people don't um, and then you know there's a little bit of a quirk in that bracelet where it gets kinked up but other than that and the bezel action I think 338 I mean, it's a really good price for uh, a really awesome everyday chronograph that is very rugged. 300 meters of water resistance, really not needed. Uh, and then you have a chronograph and all that. Pretty cool. Really nice titanium watch. Um, really a good price at 338 Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. Uh, I believe these have to go out to the next reviewer. They are hounding me to send them out, and I've had them way too long. Uh, but I do appreciate them sending along these watches for me to review. Um, and uh, like I said, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. And that's really it. I'll catch you guys in the next video.